Good morning kids, today we're checking out a brand new video from Dead Meat, The Kill Count for Hannibal from 2001. We are now into the third movie involving Hannibal, from Manhunter to Silence of the Lambs, it's now time for his name to be the one we all cry. <laughs> Welcome to The Kill Count, where we tally up the victims in all our favorite horror movies and show you how they were made. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at Hannibal, the sequel to The Silence of the Lambs, released in 2001. Hannibal picks up a decade after the events of the first- Now, depending on what month, I could technically be older than this movie movie, with Hannibal Lecter still on the loose and Clarice Starling, a grizzled FBI veteran. A botched operation puts her career in jeopardy, so Clarice finds herself forced back into the hunt for Hannibal, who's eager to revive his game of cat and mouse. After the adaptation right of The Silence of the Lambs became a critical and commercial success, to say <laughs> the least, Thomas Harris spent several years writing a follow-up novel, which he finally released in 1999. This third Hannibal Lecter book was controversial due to its lurid content and its characterization of Clarice Starling. This caused a lot of Silence's cast and crew to turn down the adaptation, including Jodie Foster, director oh. Jonathan Demme, and screenwriter Ted Taylor. But producers Dino De Laurentiis and his wife Martha were more than happy to take on the franchise again. Dino had produced Manhunter, but when that movie flopped, he sold the rights to Silence of the Lambs. Eager to make bank off that's, of Hannibal's okay. popularity, De Laurentiis turned to alien director Ridley Scott as Demme's replacement. Oh. When one pope die, we create a new pope. Really the movie's initial draft was written by acclaimed writer David Mamet, then turned over to Steven Zalian, who had written Schindler's List. Clarice Starling no. was recast as Julianne Moore with an endorsement from Hopkins, who had worked with her in Surviving Picasso. Jodie Foster's oh. performance in Silence is an all-timer, but I think Moore slides into the character well enough. I mean, I'll always love her, thanks <laughs> to The Lost World and Boogie Nights, but I do think she plays an older Starling well, and even holds herself the same way Foster did. Any differences I can see can be explained by how young the character was in Silence. She's 10 years older here, and the character can change yeah, a lot go. in 10 years. Just ask mm -hmm. Pete Campbell. As a film, Hannibal isn't a masterpiece Ooh, like Manhunter yeah, or the Silence of the Lambs, but I think it has its own appeal, especially if you're looking for more action and horror. There are multiple shoot-em-up sequences and disgusting gore, paired with one of the genre's most memorable kills. Oh, Anthony Hopkins God, that... is still excellent as Hannibal, oh. even if he's starting to become a caricature. And we once again get an iconic non-Hannibal antagonist in the form of Mason Verger, who's chewing up every scene, even without a face. Can Handy Boy up the body <laughs> oh. cap? Sorry to interrupt, but the footage are- I'm sorry, why did that make me laugh? We're gonna cut and go past the sad, and then we'll be right back, people. Well, just, just give us a moment. And now it's time for us to dig into our own Hannibal Cannibal Feast. Boy up the body count for his big title outing? Let's oh. find out and get to the kills. The movie begins. Uh, wait, are, are we in a wormhole? What the hell's going on here? I feel like I'm watching the movie through a window or something. On the other side of Matthew McConaughey's bookshelf is Barney, Hannibal's gentle orderly from the last movie. Seated across from this familiar face is a not so familiar not face. Mason Verger is the only surviving victim of Hannibal Lecter, and his obsession with the cannibal extends to Clarice Starling. So, Clarice Starling and Hannibal Lecter became. Friendly. This dude looks and acts like a Venture Brothers villain. He's one big smile away from Mr. Brisby. Add in a dash of Augustus <laughs> St. Cloud, because he's collecting artifacts too, like Hannibal's famous mask and Hannibal's famous title card. Title card. After some credits that feel like I'm watching The Wire when you walk through the garden, am I right? We jump to Washington, D.C., where we're reunited with Clarice Starling. Julianne Moore, make sure you know. I'm Special Agent Starling. Jodie Foster declined to return for a number of reasons, chief of which was how different the character was written. She also wasn't offered the pay rate she wanted. Wanted, and didn't want to make the movie without Jonathan Demme. Special Agent Starling is leading a team to arrest Abel de Drumgo, a movie drug dealer so heinous she keeps needles in her hair and uses babies as body armor. Starling's job oh, is made more difficult why? since her task force includes condescending assholes. Excuse me, I'm Officer Bolton. DC police. I'm here to be sexist, ma'am. Careful of that one, Clarice. He's got a history of having issues with authority. Oh, the cop team arrives under cover at a fish market, Mother. doing a piss poor job not looking like cops. Can I please get a cup of coffee? Yes, I nailed it. Clarice spots Drumgo, but with Baby on board, she calls off the raid. Her FBI counterparts respect her authority, but local cop Bolton draws his gun. That triggers a shootout no, that no, kills no. two gang members, one of whom is a kill count returnee after doing time with the subway gang in Predator 2. Oh, hey. We'll be right back, and we're back. Clarice's friend and fellow agent, John Brigham, takes out another guy before being struck by the getaway Ooh, car. Yeah. Clarice manages to shoot the driver and the scrub hanging out the passenger side of his best friend's ride. That just leaves Avel the drum go, alone and defenseless, save for her kid Larvest. How have you been? Don't do this. 
Do what? Oh, and her bad tap. Clarissa shot in her vest before firing back. Thankfully, she activated Deadeye, allowing her to kill Drumbo oh, without harming the God. infant. Then she waterboards the baby for more info. <laughs> Or, wait, never mind. She's oh, just she's washing him off. Clarice yeah, turns on more clean. waterworks as she watches a news report about the day's events. It confirms the death of her friend, Agent Brigham, so I'll go ahead and add him to the count. Damn. By the way, the report says Brigham and five other people were killed, but I counted six other kills. Reporting these days. Where did integrity and journalism go? For her baby-risking mm. actions, Clarice must answer to a panel of disinterested men. She admits that it maybe wasn't the best. But she called it off. She literally said and that she's got a baby, pull out. Oh, and everyone was like, alright, yeah, we'll even pull out. Nope, we're not doing this. Not here, not now. Oh, but then one son of a bitch from the local area decided, no, 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 we do this now. Oh, it's like, dude! Best idea, but she had to make a choice to save herself or be killed. I killed a mother holding her child. And I regret it. I resent myself for it. Worst of all these dudes is slimy justice official Paul Kremler, who spends the whole hearing thigh spying. Ten years into don't, her career, don't, don't, Clarice has no patience for guys like this. I wasn't speaking to you, Mr. Kremler. When I speak to you, you'll know it because I'll look at you. She's bailed out of trouble thanks to Mason Berger, who saw the news report and decided to make a move. He claims to have new information on Hannibal Lecter that he'll only share with Starling. Although she doesn't want to return to that well. Oh, sorry, too soon. She's forced <laughs> to since her reputation nah. is no longer Starling. Or Starling. At Berger's it. lavish estate, she meets his personal physician Cordell, who leads her to his boss's bedside. Berger puts himself in the spotlight for their interview, and Starling shows she isn't afraid to look him in his face. This incredible makeup was done by Greg Canham, whose work we just saw on the Lost Boys kill count. Hey. It's applied to an uncredited Gary Oldman, whose look in Bram Stoker's Dracula was also designed by Canham. To avoid hey. making Berger look like a zombie, Canham and director Ridley Scott consulted with doctors to make everything anatomically correct. It took six hours for Oldman to go through the makeup and hair process, and during takes, the special effects team would hide his eyelids using fishing wire and that when we did the take they pulled that and that oh. Oh. and then they and then they anchored them off apparently that touch was oh. a personal request from the actor when gary Why? finally was cast and came in the first thing he said was do you think we can clamp my eye open? Oldman Why? asked to go uncredited and did the role for Why? Little May. He partly modeled Berger's voice after Catherine Hepburn, but I swear I hear a bit of Jimmy Stewart in there. Yes, I know. The day you, you never thought would arrive has. Berger is disfigured thanks to Hannibal, but don't feel bad for him. No, kind of sound to me it sounds like someone trying to do an impression of Nicolas Cage. It's like, like in that Recreo video involving uh, Good Morning from Hell. Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's perfectly fine. If you do know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, and now you can't unhear it either. Well, it's uh, Chris and Blaine are trying to do uh, uh, the... Uh, no, not Chris and Blaine. You know, uh, damn it, what was the guy? Is that... <sighs> Screw it. He's a sick son of a bitch himself. He tells Clarice about how he'd raped the children who attended his father's Christian camp. Poor, unfortunate, cast-off little boys and girls who would do it anything for a candy bar. Berger was arrested, but his wealth and political connections saved him from doing jail time. He was instead assigned a court-ordered therapist who turned out to be Hannibal, Hannibal, shown here in shitty, choppy, slow-motion flashbacks, handing out drugs to Berger like candy. Would you like to Papa? Yes, I would. Thank you, Papa. Just as he did with multiple MIGs, Hannibal convinced Berger to be his own worst enemy. Try peeling off your face. <laughs> Feeding it to the dog. Fueled by the drugs, Berger complied as the good doctor oh. told him to okay go. That seemed like a good idea at the time. Berger gives Starling well, an x-ray of Hannibal he claims to have received from the man himself. The broken bone stems from a time Hannah Gordy aped out on a nurse, an incident Dr. Chilton mentioned in Silence of the Lambs. The doctors managed to reset her jaw, more or less. Save one of her eyes. On the tape, Cleary hmm. spots Hannibal's super de duper guard Barney. She pays him a visit and the two catch up. Barney mentions the sanitarium closed after Dr. Chilton went missing during his Caribbean vacation. Guess he made that okay. dinner appointment after all. But Clarice ain't here to talk about kills I won't count, nor use Barney's net zero account. She's figured out he's been selling lector souvenirs to private collectors, including the x-ray Berger showed her at his estate. Barney turns over the rest of his stock, which includes some tapes Dr. Chilton recorded of her visits with Hannibal. We saw this happening in <laughs> silence, but the 
dialogue we hear now has been re-recorded, with Julianne Moore doing Jodie Foster's lines. We hop over to Florence, Italy, where we meet Inspector Ronaldo Pazzi, a guy who likes throwing cigarettes at birds. Get out of here, birds! He's investigating the disappearance of a local librarian and wants to question the man's replacement. It ends up being Hannibal, living under a pseudonym and a bespoke fedora. It's really working oh. for him, though. It's giving productive vacation. Dr. Fell, as Lecter goes by now, isn't on Patsy's suspect list, but the doctor can't help but tease him anyway about his recent reassignment. You were on the Amasa case, I'm sure I read. Yes, that's right. Now you're on this. This is... Hold on, uh, going back to what I was saying before, oh, uh, yeah, I was still thinking of it in my own head, and yeah, I technically wasn't wrong, because uh, wasn't like the other guy, I don't know, Recreo's name, named Christian? So yeah, Christian and Blaine. You know, when I said Chris, I did mean in the wrong guy. But when they were doing on the, uh, well, the Helen impersonation ends of Nicolas Cage, it straight up sounds like, hey, excuse me, well, you know, this guy. He sounds almost like them. Much less grand a case, I would think. Well, if I thought of my work in those terms, Yes, I guess I do. Really. The Almostro case he mentions, aka the Monster of Florence, was a real-life case concerning a still oh. unidentified serial killer who murdered 14 people between 1974 and 1985. Whoa. Hannibal. That's a movie that only came out four years ago. Damn. Novelist Thomas Harris attended a related trial while doing research and decided to include the case as part of the book's Italian subplot. Clarice's investigation uh -huh. puts Hannibal back on the FBI's MySpace Top 8. Keep it up, and maybe he can get higher than Bin Laden. I know the dude was <laughs> behind the 1993 World Trade Center attack, but it's still kind of weird seeing him in a movie that came out seven months before 9-11. Hannibal sees that he's popular yeah. again, so he writes Clarice a letter complete with cutting remarks. Do you imagine your daddy being shamed by your disgrace? Do you see him in his plain pine box crushed by your failure? Also includes some Tumblr band fan art. Damn, well. honey boy, you a horny boy. Unlike Verger's X-Ray, this letter is the real deal. And while the FBI can't trace its origins, Clarice notices it's been spritzed with a distinctive perfume. She brings it to a panel of scent experts in Salamancas who Ooh. inform her the perfume is a custom blend. Clarice follows her nose to a specialty shop in Italy and requests their surveillance tapes through Patsy's police station. Maybe it's because of that drawing Hannibal scent that requires a modesty post it, but Clarice is already consumed by this case. What the hell are you doing no. sitting there in the dark, Starling? Thinking about cannibalism. It could also be that uh. she remembers how captivating Lecter was to talk to. A far cry from jackwads like Paul Kremler. I always figured him for a queer. Why would you say that, Paul? Oh, all the zortsy fortsy stuff. Krendler has it out oh, for her because on. years ago he hit on her and she turned him down. He tries to pretend that it doesn't matter and that Clarice ain't nothing special. This town is full of corn pone country pussy. Corn pussy. Oh, corn pussy. Hey. Corn pussy. 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 No. He wants to have a feast. But what he is won't this? Get corn pussy. At least not from Clarice. Oh, at least not James. from Clarice. No. Turns out the guy Jordan. in Patsy's office is also hungry for Starling, even though he's only heard her voice. To be fair, though, she's also making sexy sketches of him. Patsy himself has other stuff on his mind after spotting a familiar face on the perfume store surveillance tape. He does his that own is. sniffing, and the FBI's website reveals his librarian friend is hungry for more than just a good book. He sees a $3 million... Oh, there we go. There we go. Three mil. That's ...other cool. reward alongside a phone number that redirects him to Mason Berger. Wait, what the fuck? This guy's got pull enough to have his number on the FBI website? I mean, I guess they already treat his house like a freaking road stop. No wonder he's lounging like a TikTok girl he's sipping from a <laughs> Stanley cop. Look at him! As proof of Hanny Boy's whereabouts, Mason oh, boy. demands a fingerprint and the title of his favorite Pokemon game. Snap. Oh, all right, that was easy. Under the print, which yeah, is much okay. more difficult thanks to the doctor's giallo gloves. I bet those remind Patsy's actor Giancarlo Giannini of his career in the 1970s. Eventually, Giannini became the official Italian dub for Al Pacino, which, yeah, oh, that totally nice. makes sense. To get the print, Patsy coerces a pickpocket into working for him. When you go for his wallet, he'll catch you by the wrist. Oh, man, if the Godfather's taught me anything, it's that oranges and Italians do not mix. Sure enough, <laughs> Hannibal quickly turns the tables on this fumbling Fagin. The guy does get a print on his bracelet, but he also takes a stab to a pretty important artery. Oh. He bleeds out, and I can't tell if Patsy hastens it to cover his tracks, but in any case, it is gushing. 
So oh, that, Rosa makes that, that pig statue so vomit. The fingerprint is verified by Berger's staff, so he calls up some Sardinian henchmen to go capture Lecter. He's been planning an elaborate revenge scheme for his former psychiatrist, which includes some not-so-little piggies he's been training to eat human flesh. He loves the oh. sound of them going hog wild. Oh, they sound fantastic. Patsy's paid up and told that all he has to do fantastic. is point Hannibal out, yes. one cheek kiss away from Judas's job. But he's still bitter about losing the Olmostro case, so he decides to see Lecter's capture all the way through. Nothing could go wrong. Patsy takes his wife it's to see Sidney Prescott display display and finds Hannibal Lecter in attendance as well. After the show, the good doctor gets pretty damn flirty with Patsy's wife. She can't deny his riz. And you know what Mason Berger <laughs> always says. And nobody beats the riz. Back in America, Clarice Wait, sees what? Lecter on the perfume shop surveillance. Hold on. There's no way this is this is a movie that actually uses that wall. When it came out over 20 years ago tapes, throwing her into a choppy slow motion panic attack. She realizes Patsy is trying to catch Lecter on his own and attempts to dissuade him over the phone. The inspector hangs up on her and takes his chances, going to one of Hannibal's academic lectures. He offers to buy Hannibal drinks, a setup for Verger's henchmen to nab him outside. Before they leave, the doctor insists on showing Patsy his 23andMe results. It's your ancestor, Commendatore, hanging beneath these very windows. Mm. Francesca de Patsy. De Patsy was a 15th century banker and assassin's creed target who was hanged for plotting oh. to overthrow the Florentine government. Hannibal's picked up on That's the real. modern Patsy's betrayal as well, so he knocks him out with chloroform and takes him to the window. Lecter interrogates the copper and learns that Berger is behind his attempted kidnapping. Then Patsy gets a call from Clarice, giving Hannibal a chance to recite one of his catchphrases. Well, hello, Clarice. He's on a tight oh. schedule, so he cuts the call like short it. and cuts into Patsy's torso. The disemboweling oh. is done via gravity when Hannibal throws him from the balcony. The inspector is hanged just like his ancestor, oh. with his guts painting the pavement below. This kill was achieved using a stomach wrap loaded with fake entrails, blood sacs, and tubing. The jerk of the stunt performer's <laughs> movement caused the whole mess to fall out of a pre-torn opening. Production made a special fake blood that wouldn't stain the stucco of this historical building in Florence, where the film's Italian scenes were shot. Hopkins was popular in Italy. <laughs> I am like by tourists and locals during the shoot. I feel like the jack of it. Verger's sibling henchmen <laughs> rush inside to intercept their target, and after younger bro Mateo splits off, Hannibal finds him and delivers a choppy Freddy vs. Jason throat slash that sends him flying. His body Damn. is discovered by his older brother Carlo. With Lecter still on the loose, Verger decides to lure him out by targeting Clarice. He bribes Kremler to plant a phony romantic postcard in her office, and he does so with gusto, the piece of shit. The character of Paul Kremler oh, made a brief would. appearance in The Silence of the Lambs. There, he was played by Ron bought her, who sadly passed away in 1994. Aww. The role was recast That's with the shame. late Ray Liotta, whose performance is delightfully despicable. Five hundred thousand dollars. Since Clarice is seemingly compromised and ostensibly withholding Only evidence, K? she's put on administrative leave by her bosses. I bet she misses Crawford right about now. Crendent gives a two-faced press release claiming that he's on Clarice's side. Stalling is one of the best things that we have. The Sutterfuge earns him a house call from Hannibal, who acquires an address oh. from some of his mail. Then Hannibal embarks on a Martha Stewart shopping montage set to an aria from the opera he attended earlier. This aria, Vide Cormium, was composed by Patrick Cassidy and co-produced with Hans Zimmer, who wrote the rest oh. of Cool. Score. Hannibal is a bit of a reunion for Ridley Scott crew members, since Zimmer, editor Pietro Scalia, and cinematographer John Matheson had all just worked on Gladiator. Clarice falls asleep awesome. after a long day at the office, but the next day Hannibal interrupts her morning routine. He directs her to speed over to a local train station, though I don't think he's aware she's being followed by Verger's henchmen. For the scene set in the U.S., Hopkins yeah, wanted not. to change Lecter's appearance, cropping his hair short and building up muscle so he'd look more like a mercenary. Lecter Lee Ermey teases Clarice on the phone while strolling about. She uses sound cues to track his movements and gets within a hair of finding him. Alas, Ding. he avoids her and leaves, <laughs> and to get kidnapped by Verger's bad fellows in the parking lot. Starling reports the incident to her FBI counterparts, but it doesn't do any good since Verger has the local police force in his pocket. That means she has to go rogue, he drives through gates and cows to get back to his property. At Verger's estate, Hannibal is <laughs> once again carted to a meeting. Dude gets wheeled around everywhere, the lazy bastard. The sure would be him. nice. Put Hannibal's not only passive, he's passive aggressive too. I guess you wish now you're... you fed the rest of me to the dogs. Hmm? No, Mason. No, I much prefer you the way you are. 
Hunter is upgraded oh. to Christ-like <laughs> construction equipment and delivered back to the barnyard, where Mason intends on feeding him to his human-hungering hogs. Luis infiltrates the farm and interrupts the proceedings, shooting Carlo down when he tries no. to draw a gun. At least he's with his brother now. She shoots another goon oh. to the ground, then gives Hanny a hand with his restraints. Another lackey shows up in the rafters, and while she manages to shoot him, she's down by a bullet to the shoulder. Lecter picks her up just as Verger's hogs burst through, and oh, for crap. whatever reason, Beastmaster Hannibal holds sway over this bay of pigs. Oh. The same can't be said for that injured goon, who's eaten alive by the hogs just as Cordell wheels his boss in to check out the commotion. Oh god, oh. eat his face! Clarice passes out, and Verger tries to get his nurse to break his Hippocratic oath. Get the gun and shoot him! Go into the pan? Yes! No. I'm staying here. You're involved is what you are. Hannibal, however, <laughs> has a different proposition. Hey, Cordell, why didn't you push he him in? He is whirling it. You can always say it was me. That sounds just fine to Cordell, who sets his boss's wheelchair to drive. It plunges the paralyzed pedophile oh, down to no. perish among the pigs. Verger's face is devoured again, this time by boars, as Hannibal makes his escape, hoisted by his own pig tar. Animal Cord... Okay, oh no, I do actually kind of like that. Because Hannibal Strape just said, Hey... Kill him, say it was me, blood off your hands. And he, without, he within like the seconds of thinking about it, was just like, click, goodbye. <laughs> Holy shit. Coordinator and awesome name to have her sled Reynolds found a dozen boars between 300 and 600 pounds for the movie. He trained them to attack prosthetic dummies made of gelatin and chicken so they could be torn apart and eaten. For some shots, they were oh. trained to fake attack stunt coordinator Phil Nielsen. And they actually jerk him off. Wait, what? His feet. Oh, dude, <laughs> crazy. Special effects makeup Funny. artist Keith Vanderlyn also created a seriously impressive mechanical boar head to use in close-ups. Vanderlyn and his team made another animatronic as well. Theresa's bloody baptism earlier was done with a robot baby to avoid, you know, uh, uh, waterboarding okay. a real Good. one. Later, Paul Good. Kremler goes to his remote vacation lake house for some rest and relaxation. Hannibal surprises him with more rest than he bargained for, having found this address in the mail he stole. Clarice stirs awake upstairs, her bullet wound stitched and her form aware fixed. Or should I say affixed to her boobies? The funniest part about uh. this scene is imagining Hannibal applying double-sided teeth. Because let me tell you, it's there and it is doing a lot of work. Despite Clearly. feeling a little woozy here, Clarice still manages to phone the police, which Hannibal sees while doing meal prep in the kitchen. She meets up with him in the Love dining her? room, where special guest Krendler is acting a bit unusual. Hello, Agent Starling. I always wanted to watch you eat. That might have something to do with the haircut Hanny boys get. Yeah, I was literally just about to say his brain's been tampered with. Him. I Thank think you. Sloppy Sweeney took a little too much off the top. In the movie's oh, most infamous shit. scene, Hannibal slices bits off of Kremler's- Oh my god, I- oh, I just got this. This is referenced in, like, Scary Movie 3. Shit, now I've seen the actual thing! brain, fries them up, and then feeds them back to him. Christ almighty! No! It is a disgusting dinner that rivals the one in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. They achieved the effect using multiple techniques, including a green screen cap that required Ray Liotta to shave his head. Then they combined <laughs> oh. shots of him with footage from a dummy that had real animal brains in it. This was more than just a dummy, though. It was a $70,000 full-sized animatronic version of Liotta, which was used for close-ups when Hannibal cuts into the brain. To me, it's one oh. of the best scenes. <laughs> Uh, that has combined all the techniques um, available. This animatronic oh, had full yes. facial <laughs> movement and was even used in a couple of wider shots, though Ridley Scott won't say which ones because he likes that people can't tell. All this work culminates in what is easily the most memorable scene of the film. Yeah, I think they'll remember this one. Kremler yeah. doesn't die on camera, yeah. but I'm gonna go ahead and put him on the count after Hannibal throws the towel in for him. I'm just assuming Thank you, you don't survive getting your brain picked like that. No, Clarice no, finds the not. strength to attack Lecter in the kitchen, but he traps her ponytail in the fridge door. When he finally decides to steal a kiss, Starling startles him by handcuffing their wrists together. With the police closing in, Lecter uh -oh. prepares to free himself with the old Dr. Gordon treatment. Oh shit, I just realized they have stuff in common. I'm a doctor. Yeah, he is too. <laughs> Hannibal hesitates, then makes his choice and brings Black the cleaver down off camera. But Clarice ain't the one who will be buying gloves at a two-for-one deal, since she's still able to raise both hands when the police find her. I'm Clarice Starling! FBI! It's Hannibal who's now short a hand. To see on his escape flight. I much prefer this to the book's ending, where Lecter and Starling run off together and retire to a life of sex, drugs, and building memory palaces together? No wonder what? Jodie Foster turned this down. A young boy next to Hannibal is curious about his lunch, which includes some Kremler carryout. Lecter decides oh, to run the young boy's horizons. As your mother tells you, and my mother certainly told me, it is important, she always used to say, 
I was to try new things. The movie ends with don't, one last peep don't. at Lecter's piercing gaze. Oh, How many people got killed brain. by a hungry, hungry Hannibal? Let's find out at the numbers. It's a little hot in here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a little funny. Thank Fifteen James. people died in Hannibal, five more than in Silence of the Lambs. The victims consisted of 14 men and only one woman, giving us this pie chart, as well as a kiligami, since this exact Ooh. count and gender breakdown has never been seen on the show before. With a runtime of 132 minutes, that left us with oh, a kill nice. on average every 8.8 .8 minutes. Nice. I'll give the Golden Chainsaw for coolest kill to Paul Krendler, obviously. The sight of yeah. Ray Liotta eating his own frickin' brain is the thing of <laughs> nightmares for anyone who watched this movie too young, myself included. Don't wish for lame kill will go to Mateo. A choppy slow-mo slash isn't good enough for Freddy vs. Jason, let alone mm -hmm. a Hannibal Lecter film. And that's it. Hannibal came out in 2001, and while it wasn't critically beloved, it did make a lot of the box office. Next week, we'll be hopping back before Clarice's time with a prequel, Red Dragon. But until then, I'm James prequel. A. Janice. This has been the Kill Count. Well, the next kill. Well, everyone, I hope you jo enjoyed today's video. Now, remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more. Link to the original will be in the description below. And I'll see all you folks later when we flick back on. Peace out.